Good morning, Super Moms. My name is Vera Zepina, and again, this is the Super Mom Summit. I'm really thrilled to present you my uh, another expert. Her name is Michelle Bursell. Um, Michelle Bursell is a best-selling author of a few books. Her latest book, uh, the name was Feel. It was presented as a best-selling book in 2012, and it was featured as a gift at the 2020. Uh, 2012 Emmy Awards. She's known as a visionary leader in emotional empowerment who challenges common thought and understanding regarding emotional well-being. Combining with her innovative ideas along with the training in clinical psychology and education, Bursell is transforming the way people think and feel across the globe and within every generation. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Great, Vera. Thanks so much for having me on this wonderful Tell us on it for moms. This is awesome. Thank you so much for doing an interview with us. I'm so excited. I have so many questions for you, and uh, it's never enough time, as I feel. Uh, so first of all, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? And I read that you almost walked away from, from the psychology and uh, and life coaching. What happened there? Yeah. So you know, um, I've always been interested in in emotional well-being. I mean, from when I was young, it seemed people were coming up to me and asking me advice about issues. And so it really led me on this path to studying um, psycho clinical psychology and really understanding our emotions. So I had one of those moments, Vera, where it was kind of that the, the dark night of the soul, one of those really turning point events where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And this was after years and years of training um, because I basically felt like a fraud. And here's why. Um, I couldn't understand the purpose to our emotions. So for me personally, it didn't feel like it was enough that I knew all the tricks and ways and tools to get rid of our negative feelings. I wanted to understand why our emotions emotions showed up when they did and why we felt a particular feeling over another. And because I couldn't answer that, I just kind of had this wig out moment where I was just like, I can't do this. Um, I, I just, something didn't feel authentic about what I was teaching without knowing the purpose. So I, I really did go through the like, <laughs> big old ugly cry. You know, it was mascara and snot and it wasn't pretty. It, because I was giving up everything that I dedicated my life towards. And I said, I'm, I'm just, just not doing this anymore. And that's when I had this huge turning point where um, I was guided to write. And I was guided to write about um, the feelings that I was experiencing. And so each morning I started getting woken up at 4.30 in the morning with this sense of I need to write. And what came through in the, uh, those wee hours of the morning um, was miraculous for me personally because it was finally answering to me what the purpose was of our emotions. And, you know, I, I tell moms this because it's, it, you know, it's so typical of us moms. Uh, you know, I had a daughter, my daughter's 18 months older than my twin boys. My twin boys weren't even one yet. And this started happening um, right about a week before after I got them sleeping through the night. So the last thing I wanted to do is get up in the morning and write. But there was something within me telling me to do, to do just that. And thankfully I did because um, whatever that insight was that flowed through me during, you know, the middle of the, the night um, gave me the answer as to why we feel the way we do and how our, our, our negative feelings in particular have a purpose to guide us back onto our path whenever we're off of it off of it or whenever we're in a state of fear and it's very powerful it's changed me and all those that i've served and now it's turned into this global movement to experience our negative feelings from love rather than fear this is awesome why do they even um exist like why do the negative feelings seem to exist to pressure us you know like why well they're here actually as a signal uh all of our emotions are so, so 
So um, when we're feeling good and we're feeling excited or happy or joyful, that is telling us that whatever we're doing, um, however we're acting and thinking and, and believing is working for us. And, and more than working for us, it's an alignment with our truth and our potential. Now, when we experience negative feelings, it's a signal to also let us know when things aren't working for us. We're either having thoughts, beliefs, or actions that are going against the truth of who we are, that are going against our potential. So here, so this is where negative feelings become this ultimate empowering signal to let us know, you know, it's like waving the flag, like, hello, you're off base here. And what I love about um, the method that I teach is that each negative feeling that we experience is actually guiding us to as to how to get back on track to our truth and to our potential. When we take that empowered action, the negative feeling goes away on its own and we're back on track to feeling our best. So it's okay to have negative feelings. Not only is it okay, it is a gift. And it's an, it's an opportunity to see each negative feeling as a gift to support us. Because here's the thing, Vera, um, our, what I call our ego, um, other people call it your inner critic, it's developed to try to keep us safe. And how, it, how our ego in particular defines safety is by limiting us, basically. It's by keeping us in our current situation because the current situation feels comfortable. So when you have a negative feeling coming through about your current situation, that's telling you that there is there is more out there available to for you. Um, there's more potential for you to claim. There's more um, available to make your life easier or more fulfilled for you. So they're always a gift, but it's up to us to consciously shift our mindset to understand them in this way. Okay, okay so, um, so it's okay to have negative feelings, but uh, it, ideally we would like to get rid of that, right? The negative feelings or the fears or the ego. So, yes, ideally we would like to get rid of that, right? Well, uh, I, I, we can't. Get, well, here's the thing. Um, when you understand these elements from love, you're not getting rid of anything. And what I encourage everyone that's listening listening in to remember is that what we resist persists, right? We've all heard this. What people are doing in what I call the emotional stone age is we're trying to get rid of our negative feelings. We're trying to get rid of our fear. We're trying to get rid of our ego, but they're, they're there for a reason. And when you understand the, the loving or empowered reason why they're there, you no longer resist them. And then you're able to take the empowered forward action and the negative feeling goes away on its own so in other words the way that i teach people how to deal with their negative feelings in an empowered way there is no resistance there is no trying to get rid of it you're understanding the empowered message and then you when you take that action that negative feeling goes away because it no longer has to signal to you that you're off track because the action you're taking automatically brings you back on track. So, I mean, do we uh, do we want to be experiencing negative feelings all the time? No, of course not. You know, so doing this this empowered way actually lessens um, how often you experience negative feelings because you're more you're living more on track and on purpose with your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does make sense. So what I was thinking here, um, you know how they always say uh, you need to start thinking positively, you need to stop feeling negatively. Basically, as I understand, if I feel neg I, like I wake up in the morning and I feel negative, it doesn't mean that I need to get rid of it right away. It's just It just means that I need to take some actions and then the feeling will go away if I do the right action. Yeah, I, I love this question, Vera, because I, you know, a lot of people, they want, want to keep a positive mindset and they're like, how do I keep a positive mindset and not push away my negative feeling because I want to be positive, I don't want to be negative. But here's the thing, if, if we just try to push that negative 
feeling away and, and be positive, that negative energy is still running in us. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, uh, we waste so much of our energy trying to push it down um, rather than attend to it. But what I'm, what I'm inviting people to do differently is we don't have to allow that negative feeling to come up and then buy into all the negative uh, stories that are behind it. So instead of buying into the negative story, there's an opportunity to understand that there's um, an empowered message there. So if it's helpful, Vera, I can, t I can take people through the process of how I, how I t teach people um, to shift out of the emotional stone age and to shift to this emotional empowerment. Would, would that be helpful? Yes, I think I was going to get to it uh, towards the end of the interview. And oh, okay. I was going to we'll get everybody links to um, to your website and to your uh, to your books but just before that can you can you just give me a quick example of a negative feeling and of empowering and you know how the feeling goes away something from a daily life yes uh, let's say uh, ang let's use anger because anger is one of my favorite emotions because it's the most misunderstood and people think anger is awful. So let's say you get angry at your husband or your kids or your coworker. Your anger understood um, from fear or understood as a negative feeling is going, if you allow that emotion to come up and you don't know that there's an empowered version to that, what's happening, the reason why you're feeling angry is because you're getting triggered to think that you are powerless in this situation. Whenever we think we're powerless, we're trying to grab on to any power that we can to feel like we still have control and power. And that makes us do these twisted things like yell at people, call them names, uh, blame them. You know, it's, it's weird where our emotions go sideways because we don't know that the, an empowered version exists. Now the signal to our anger is, it's a signal to let us know that, honey, right now in this moment, you feel like you're powerless and it's not true. That's what the empowered version is coming. And it's asking us to claim our anger in a way that makes us un uncomfortable, that's outside our norm, outside our comfort zone. So if you usually get angry at your husband for not um, unloading the dishwasher and you start going on this tirade about, you know, don't you understand how much work I do for the kids and all that, that is your emotion coming out, your anger coming out sideways and in fear. Now, your empowered uh, uh, response would be to, uh, to address this differently. So do you need to... Um, have a loving conversation uh, with your husband about, you know, different different chores that you do. Are, are there different boundaries that need to be in place? Should your husband even be doing this? Maybe it's time for your kids to step up and uh, and do the dishwasher. In, in other words, your anchor is there for you to step into doing something that you normally wouldn't do. But it's a, a it's a power with versus the fear version of anger is power over, trying to power over people. Um, and so when we do this, we start to make shifts that, that align us back with our truth so that we are living more authentically. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. So in that particular situation, um, what would be a good response, you know, for a woman to give to her husband when, who didn't unload the dishwasher? How to you know, not have a fight at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, it, it depends on the woman, how she's meant to claim her power. If she's a person that sucks it up and does it anyways, then her version of claiming her power would be talking to her husband, right? If, if you know, just having a conversation like, honey, I really, you know, we've talked about this before. It really helps me out if you do this. Um, if she's a person that uh, the, the emotions go sideways and she starts yelling at her husband, it would be asking herself, how can I have a conversation with him that allows him to understand where I'm coming from, mm -hmm. but also, 
also appreciates where he's coming from. So in, in other words, that person's, the person who yells and screams, her power is actually by reeling it in a bit and, and meeting her husband. So instead of powering over, it's about coming together. Um, and for some people, this, you know, this is, uh, uh, for people who, who have anger that's more out there, their power actually is reeling it in. Uh, one of my favorite examples that I always share is like with my kids, they know when I'm really angry because I actually get quiet. Mm -hmm. I get so quiet. I'm reeling in my energy in a way that they have to focus in on me because I'm not going to speak up and you must pay attention to me. And it really, uh, it gets their attention, let's put it that way, in a very uh, powerful way that's respectful of everyone rather than yelling and screaming at my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, do I still have moments where I yell and scream at my kids? Sure. But the conscious piece is reminding ourselves, I, I am closer to getting what I want when I respond in an empowered way rather than unconsciously react out of fear. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. I understand that. Because it's so, it's just so much easier to, you know, yell and scream and be angry and, uh, but then you're angry at yourself after everything happens. Because, totally. Because you, you yeah. didn't change anything, right? By yelling at him for not doing whatever he was supposed to do. And usually I end up doing it myself anyway instead of doing something differently and you know okay well let's move forward so what's an example of uh old word old world thinking regarding our feelings well this old world thinking really is uh vera this uh, the sense that our negative feelings are bad, uh, that our negative feelings are something to get rid of. Um, and, and the new world thinking is understanding that they're here to, to empower us, you know. So if we're a person that, you know, our anger comes out, but then we end up doing it anyways, that's not really serving us. That's taking away our energy that could be used in service in, in, in ways that are truly in alignment with who we are. So every negative feeling that we have is guiding us to step more into that. And there's a reason why we choose the, the, the easier route of lashing out or, or just going along with that emotional reaction. It keeps us safe, whether that it keeps us safe in thinking we're nicer people for just doing that or whatever it is. Um, our negative feelings are trying to help us expand to say you can still be nice and not do the dishwasher <laughs> and still speak to your family or whoever you need to speak to and change and change this at a very um you know in a very, very simple day-to-day -day measure but this also has a ripple effect where you're stepping more into your power uh in other areas of your life mm -hmm. okay um and you always talk about uh, feminine emotional mastery. What is it, and does it always apply? Does it only apply to women? Uh, it does not just apply to women. Um, feminine emotional mastery is about becoming a master of receiving in our life. And, and what I see so often um, in women these days, and the statistics prove this. Uh, in fact, ninety-two percent of working women. Uh, I'm sorry, working moms and 89% of stay-at-home moms. This is basically nine out of 10 moms feel completely overwhelmed, completely overwhelmed. And so, you know, it's demonstrating that women are overly giving and we don't know how to receive. Um, and our emotions, first of all, to apply this approach of empowerment is about learning to receive our feelings, all of them, rather than resist certain ones. And when we learn to receive our feelings and the empowerment with them, we become better receivers for life. You know, again, back to that old dishwasher example, you're learning to receive how to get someone else to do, uh, do some work that you need support around. That's huge. You learn to do that around something as simple as the dishwasher is really a statement of empowerment for for you to get support in more and more areas of, of your life. The more supported you feel, the 
less overwhelmed you're going to be. So this is this is a practice, and mastering this is a mastery of receiving. So you can receive more of the joy and fulfillment and ease that you want in your life. That probably takes a while to master. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, mastering isn't perfection so um, you can practice this and, and people will see shifts um, very quickly like you know at one time practicing this some people will get a huge shift for other people if you're um, used to denying your negative feelings it may take a few times but it's it's really just putting it into practice in that moment that an emotion comes up to recognize hey, this is just a signal and I've got a choice to respond rather than react. React is always going to be from fear. Yes, it's the easier choice. And yes, we will sometimes choose that easier choice. But again, we're going to get more of what the outcomes that we want when we take that empowered approach. So it's worth doing. And that probably, not probably, it for sure benefits, you know, the entire family and everybody around us. Because nobody wants to see an angry person at all times. <laughs> well, especially the fear version of anger. Exactly, yeah. And, and what I love about this is that kids are such uh, easy learners of this. The kids will pick this up quickly. And, um, and then they will remind you the purpose of your anger or if it's a different emotion, the purpose of your anger anxiety or your sadness and it's really fun to see how quickly they get it yeah that's true and then you ask yourself where does this anger come from oh wait that's for me so yeah and it's not you you never want to think that this yes. particular thing actually comes from you but pretty much everything they learn they they learn from us so yes yeah so uh how about um let's say business you know like as a woman why are emotions why are they important in all aspects of our life like in business and like as in being a parent like in a daily life yes well we're we're experiencing uh, numerous emotions every hour um, the more we are attuned with our emotions um, the more we're going to be attuned with others and the more again um, our emotions are here to help us step outside our comfort zone so whatever you know all you need to do is ask yourself what do what do i want what do i want in life do i want a, a better connection with my kids do i want um a, a raise with my work or whatever it whatever we're wanting and then ask ourselves what am i telling myself as to why i'm not getting that and underneath that, there's going to be an emotion. And that emotion is going to guide you out of your current way of being so that you can actually claim what it is you desire. Will that take some focus and some intention uh, to do things differently? Absolutely. But again, it's so worth it when we get to get out of our stories of challenge and make them stories of triumph and change. Um, to creating a life that feels good and right to us, you know, a life that feels at ease so that we can really be the people that we're meant to be while, while we're here. And uh, what if I don't feel connected to my feelings or I don't express my feelings or emotions? Um, is there any advice you can give me? Uh, yes. Um, you know, when people feel that disconnect um, you know first of all I, I always try to to share with them why that is um, it's felt safer to do that and what we have to understand especially as women um, we've been shamed for our feelings we've been shamed uh, for our negative emotions because they've been considered a weakness so it's really shifting that understanding um, to know that that aspect of us has been shamed especially because it's so, so powerful and when we begin to reconnect with our emotions we're actually reconnecting with our in, inner wisdom 
So for people who struggle with connecting with their feelings, what I, where I start with is to say, you know, rather than put a general umbrella feeling over what you're experiencing, like a lot of people will just say, I'm stressed or I'm overwhelmed. I'm really asking them to like, let's break it down to like five feelings, right? Like, are you, you know, are you angry? Are you sad? Are you guilty? Are you feeling guilty? Um, frustrated. I really try to break it down where they just name, you know, out of five feelings, what is it closest to any of these, you know, to really get them to hone in on. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, sadness there or, or along with some anxiety. And then whatever that, um, that, and then it's really listening. Well, what, what is stronger right now? Is it sadness or anxiety? And the more that they can start to feel into themselves and into their body, um, the more they're connecting with themselves. So what's happened to so many women is they've got these feelings going on and they don't know how to deal with them. So they've stopped dealing with them and they've just stayed busy, 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 busy. Um, but when we do that, we're missing an opportunity for our lives to work for us, e you know, easier. We just don't see that in the time because it seems like more of a hassle to deal with our negative feelings. But if you deal with them in an empowered way, I promise you, life becomes much easier. Um, so it's, it's beginning to work with them um, by, by tuning back into ourselves. That's where your wisdom is to begin with. Your emotions are just a part of that inner wisdom to help your life run smoother and is it is it better to um start doing with a professional or you can kind of do it on your own oh you can totally do this on your own and um the process that i'm going to give to people will help them as well to know how to um really begin to feel their emotions in a way where they can catch themselves when they're going to go down a, a disempowered path versus an empowered path. Once you start to have one experience where you shift your emotions to the empowered path, it becomes contagious. You just want to do it more and more because you see the benefits. You immediately experience the benefits to mm -hmm. that. Okay, well, let's start about the process a little bit then, about the steps. Cool. Uh, we actually did the first one, uh, when it, which is identify how you feel. So um, it, it really is, it, rather than say, I'm stressed, really name how you feel. If you're feeling three different feelings all at once, what's the strongest emotion coming through? That's step number one. Step number two is something that is controversial for some, because what, in step number two, I'm going to ask you to write down everything your fear or your, your inner critic is saying about this emotion. So again, people who use the law of attraction or people who just want, want to stay in a positive mindset are like, Michelle, why would I write down what my inner critic or ego or fear is telling me? Well, here's why. One, if you don't, and, and I really want people to get this, if you don't, that energy stays within your body. So you're trying to be positive mindset, but the rest of your body is dealing with a negative emotion. And this is when dis-ease turns into literally disease, okay? And I've seen people, you know, I've worked with people with, you know, um, terrible ailments you know, that are now chronic. And it turns out they've had decades of pushing down their feelings. Um, and we've seen improvement um, when they bring these feelings up and they deal with them in an empowered way. Um, but it, it really creates stress on your body. And, and you know, physicians and medicine um, reiterates this point by saying, you know, stress is, I don't know, 80% of all disease. You know, it really, what's underneath stress is, is unprocessed emotion. So, uh, number two, we are going to write down what that, that those negative messages are so they're not living within you anymore, A, and B, so that you actually start to see the tapes that are coming through your feelings. We've all heard the, the sense that we have these old tapes in our 
in our um, in our mind that um, they aren't true, but we just listen to them. There's actually something very empowering when you write them down. Because when you write them down, you're able to see them and they stop spinning in your head. See, the reason why things will continue to spin, um, especially your ego or your inner critic, it will keep spinning because it doesn't feel heard. When you're writing this down, you're like, okay, ego, inner critic, I hear you. I'm writing down exactly what you have to give me. And you give it five or ten minutes, whatever you need, but you put a limit to it. Then the third step is that you listen for your inner wisdom to come through. Now, there's something magical that happens when you do step number two. When you do step number two of writing down what your ego is, all the ne negative messages of what your ego is telling you, you actually create a space for this inner wisdom or this inner guidance or your intuition, however you want to frame that, to come through. And for people who don't feel like they have that, they, they don't even know if they have inner wisdom, they don't know if they have intuition, begin with your negative feelings because you get rid of the ego. You're getting, you're temporarily finding space that gets rid of the monkey mind. And that's when that wisdom can actually come through and serve us. And this is what I tell people. You know, if, you're, if you feel like you're pretty intuitive, Inner guidance, you may get, you know, um, something uh, very powerful come through. Like my first book was that inner guidance telling me to write. And that's why I started writing at 4.30 in the morning. It was that a voice t coming through to, to tell me to write. But for some people, they might not get anything. And they're like, Michelle, I did this. I'm on step number three, and I got, I got nothing. And I said, well, isn't that something to celebrate, right? Because for maybe a split second, your mind stopped. And in that nothingness, you can look at it as nothing, as empty, or you can look at it as a fertile ground where your, your vision, your dreams now have the room to grow. And before, it was all tangled up with the weeds of those old tapes and stories that weren't serving you. So whatever you get in step number three, you celebrate. And then in step number four, it's to take action on anything you get in step number three. So for me personally, um, you know, with the book, it was you need to write, go to your computer and write. I, I went to my computer and wrote, you know, that was, that was me taking action on that. For some people, if they're getting, you know, I didn't get anything, then it's, you know, how can I create a practice uh, of, of taking action so I can create more of this space so the monkey mind stops. Um, if you're if you're in the you know if you're writing if you're giving space for your inner wisdom to come through, and you keep giving one word like tea or the color green, then you take action on like wow what does the color mean green mean to me? Does it mean go or uh, what does tea mean? You're just taking some little action. After a few times doing this, Vera, you're going to get things like. You're just going to get a little pop that says, you know, I really need to talk to my kid about this, or I'm going to, uh, I need to call my mom. I call it the, the middle of the night voice, because for people um, who don't feel like they're intuitive, I'm like, well, really, have you never had that feeling in the middle of the night, like to just go check on your kid or go check your door? I'm like, it's the same voice. We're just learning how to tune into it, you know, more frequently so it can guide us again to make our life easier. The more we um, create that, the, the space in step number three, and then step number four, take action from it, then your negative feeling goes away. There's, not, there's no resisting it. There's no pushing it away because you're taking action in an empowered way and um, it's guiding you to, to step back into your truth and your potential. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to repeat you, so the first step is to... Uh, do some digging for the feelings, for the actual feelings. The second step is to write them down, right? Yes. And the third step is to celebrate. And, and the fourth step is to take some actions. Uh, pretty close. 
First step, identify your feeling. Second step, write down the negative messages of, of that feeling. Step number three is, is to um, write down what your what is coming through from your inner guidance or your intuition and celebrate whatever it is that comes through. Step number four, take yeah. action. Well, it, yep. it actually sounds pretty doable. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just, I guess you really have to, you, you need to want it. Like you need to, you need to want to do it. Well, yes. And for, so, and here's how we make ourselves want it. Either we, we really get clear that we're not getting what we want and something needs to change and it starts with us we are the cause to the effect of our reality that means we've got to we've got to go within to to change the cause to change the effect or you're in so much emotional pain that it's worth changing it's worth taking the extra effort so again this is where pain can be very powerful because we're either recognizing hey i'm not getting what i want and i got to do something different within me or I'm in so much emotional pain, I need to change this. And, and then in both cases, it becomes worth doing. Um, and, and that's what's, it's, it's that pain that's actually an invitation to expand who we are and step into the truth of more of, more of who we are. This is really interesting. Thank, thank you so much. The this, this, this steps are, I think this is a great information for somebody who doesn't know. Or, you know, a lot of times we say, oh, you know, maybe I need to go see a counselor, but I can't afford it, or I'm not ready, or, I mean, we come up with all different kinds of excuses. But I guess you just have to want to do something, you want to change something, and then you can do it on your own. So, can you tell us a little bit more about your book? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about the books that you wrote and where we can find them? Absolutely. So my first book um, that I spoke about where I was waking up at 4.30 in the morning, that's called Emotional Empowerment, Become Empowered. Um, and it's really a book about my own process. I'm really uh, just sharing with you all the ups and downs, the craziness that our emotions can take us on, um, primarily so people don't feel alone if they're um, emotionally struggling and to share that there's a way out. So it's more of my personal journey. And then the, the second book is more of a guidebook. It, the, the second book is called Feel, Turn Your Negative Feelings Into Your Greatest Allies. And um, it's, it's a guidebook about um, how to, to do the process that I shared more deeply, um, how to, to experience your feelings from an empowered place. And where I list, you know, all a whole bunch like 65 different feelings and really share with you what the what your inner critic and your fear is going to say about this feeling versus here's the empowered um uh reaction and response that you can have instead so um it's very helpful for people if they're you know they're looking up like i feel frustrated you know how can i do this in an empowered way you can just look that up i feel jealous i feel guilty you just look it up and you you can you can start on this path right away to being able to take to respond differently um, and so both of those can be found at barnesandnoble.com amazon.com or you can also go to my website and, and link from there okay Michelle thank you so much I know you're busy thank you so much for making some time for the interview and uh, you're I welcome. learned a lot today and I hope everybody who's watching you know make some notes or you can rewatch it for a couple of days and uh, I think it's important for us mothers to feel the feelings, but not to get overwhelmed. So be able to express our feelings, but not to be too angry or frustrated with the family. Because we all know kids and husbands and housework, and there's so many different things that we deal with on a you know day-to-day -day basis. And it's it's hard not to feel overwhelmed. So I hope you know. Uh, what Michelle told us today will help to deal with our, our feelings, you know, in a different way and start to appreciate our feelings a little bit better, I guess, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, my name is Vera Stepina. This is the Super Mom Summit. This is 
Michelle Bursell. Uh, her website is michellebursell.com and there's a link in my email. Please go check it out and uh, I hope to see everybody tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.